So, we had uh, derived the transformation equations for electric field and magnetic field as one goes from one inertial frame to the other inertial frame. And then we also worked out a problem where a charge is moving with a constant velocity v and because of that we had written expressions for electric field. And uh, today is uh, the turn of magnetic field we would like to write the magnetic field due to this uh, moving charge. So, the transformation equations are here in, on the board these are the transformation equations going from s to s prime and in our scheme we will go from s prime to s. Remember what we had done is we have taken a particle this is s frame and a particle moves with velocity v and at certain instant it is at the origin and at this instant we are writing what is the electric field, what is the magnetic field at this point x y 0. And our scheme was that we set up uh, S prime frame which is also at this uh, origin of S prime is at this point at t equal to t prime equal to 0 when the this particle is here. So, that I take as t equal to 0, t prime is equal to 0. So, s prime is here and after that q moves with velocity v, s prime moves with velocity v. So, this q is always at the origin of s prime and hence if I look at this whole situation from s prime what I feel is very simple situation the charge q is placed at the origin that is it and therefore, we know what is the electric field, what is the magnetic field here and then from here to here we make the transformations. So, electric field we have already done and magnetic field we have to do. So, the magnetic field uh, equations are here b x prime is equal to b x and all that and we will be using the inverse. So, let me write those equation first. So, it will be b x equal to b x prime. Okay, b x is equal to b x prime I am interchanging primed and unprimed symbols and then uh, v should be replaced by minus v for here it will be b y equal to it will be b y equal to b y prime this b y is equal to b y prime and then this v becomes minus v. So, minus v by c square e z minus v by c square e z and this whole thing divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square and finally, b z equal to b z prime plus v by c square and e y prime and divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square right. So, change v to minus v and primed and unprimed symbols you have to change. So, these are the transformation equations. In this frame we have a 0 b. So, b x is equal to b y equal to b z is equal to 0 because the charge is at rest here. So, there is no magnetic field and the electrostatic field electric field we had uh, written E x prime E y prime and E z prime. On the board I have E y prime expression for E y prime I have here E z prime is anyway 0 E x prime perhaps I do not need. So, it is fine with me. So, let us start B x B x is 0 because B x is B x prime and b x prime is 0 in this frame no magnetic field. So, it is 0 b y b y b y prime 0 e z prime again 0 e z prime again 0. So, b y is also 0 so, it is only b z and how much is b z b z is b z prime which is 0 plus v by c square. So, plus v by c square here is v by c square e y prime 
and E y prime we had derived it in the previous lecture it is still on the board. So, I will use this this is E 1 E y prime. So, it is q r sin theta then 1 minus v square by c square power 3 by 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube 1 minus v square by c square sin square theta and then to the power 3 by 2. This is E y prime v by c square into E y prime and that divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square. So, that divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square. So, this uh, square root 1 minus v square by c square will cancel half power from the numerator here. So, you will be left with q into v into r q into v into r then sin theta and this is 1 minus v square by c square divided by 4 pi q into v into r I have written. So, 4 pi epsilon naught c square and r cube right 1 minus v square by c square sin square theta and 3 by 2. All right. Once again check q into v into r is here then sin theta and 1 minus v square by c square and then the c square is, is here 4 pi epsilon naught 4 pi epsilon naught c square and then r cube and 1 minus v square by c square sin square theta 3 by 2. So, that is the magnetic field we have gotten the expression of magnetic field the magnetic field is in z direction y component is 0 x component is 0 and you have z component only. So, it is in z direction. So, you can use your right hand thumb rule if it is a current in this direction you know if you have a current in this direction you can put your uh, right hand thumb along the current and the fingers will give you the direction of magnetic field. So, here the magnetic field will be coming out of the board and this is x axis and this is y axis. So, z axis in uh, that direction. So, magnetic field for this current would have been in z direction. What we say is you do not have a current as such you do not have uh, a wire you do not have a linear charge everywhere here to uh, large distances moving it is one single particle. So, because of that also the magnetic field is uh, in that same direction it acts like a current element it acts like a current element and if you remember batts havert law because of a current element if you have uh, a current i and a small length d l consider only this much it is part of a bigger circuit. So, you have a current in a, in, in a circuit and from there I take just a small part of length d l and because of this because of this part what is the field here ok. So, if this is r distance and this is theta then the batts havert law is that d b is equal to mu naught i d l cross r divided by 4 pi r cube. So, that is the uh, batch severt law and this 1 by epsilon naught c square that you can write mu naught. So, you can put mu naught here. So, it is mu naught by 4 pi mu naught by 4 pi r cube is also there and d l cross r will be mu naught. So, if I take the magnitude let me take the magnitude. So, let me take the magnitude the magnitude is here is d b is equal to mu naught i d l and then r and sin theta where theta is the angle between this d l direction and this uh, r direction and then divided by 4 pi r cube. 
So, this r you can cancel, it will be r square, here also r can be cancelled and it will be r square. So, that comes from the batz havert law, but uh, this charge moving, charge, single charge, one single charge moving in one direction, can you call it a current element and can you call it, can you use batz havert law? If I compare this with this, the expressions are very, very different. So, a charge, single charge moving for that batz havert law as such cannot be applied. This is the real uh, magnitude of uh, magnetic field and this comes from the batz havert law. But if the speed of the charge is small as compared to the speed of light, if v is much much smaller than c, then you can make some simplifications. Okay. Then you can make some simplifications. You can neglect this v square by c square here and then it will be q into v into r sin theta divided by. Here also it is v square by c square, so you can neglect that in comparison to 1 and then it will be 4 pi epsilon naught c square, 1 by epsilon naught c square you can write as mu naught. So, it will be mu naught here and 4 pi here r cube that is all and you can see that if you say that q into v is equivalent to i into d l it, it matches q into i d l mu naught into i d l then mu naught into q v. So, for i d l if you write as q times v and then r sin theta r sin theta 4 pi r cube it matches. So, a single charge moving with velocity v q times v that can be treated as your current element and then you can use batz havert law to get the magnetic field, but uh, in general no. In general if v is not much much smaller than c then you should use this whole expression. Okay. So, that is about uh, the electric field magnetic field due to a point charge moving. Now, one more thing I would like to point out in this course is that uh, electric field and magnetic field have these transformations uh, that we have used and we derived these transformation equations using Lorentz transformation. Right? Remember how did we derive all those equations of uh, E x prime, B x, B x prime and all those equations transformation equations. We started with a particular situation and then we calculated forces force on that particle electromagnetic force on that particle q times E vector plus q v cross b and we transform that force from uh, s prime to s or s to s prime and from there we derived all these things and force transformation is based on the Lorentz transformation. So, these are related uh, through Lorentz transformation. So, we had uh, several sets of quantities which are uh, related through Lorentz transformation. We have that uh, C t and the space coordinate x y z and they are they transform according to Lorentz transformation and we say that it makes a 4 vector. So, let me write let me write. So, it is uh, C t x y z this is your uh, position vector 4 position vector. Now, this transforms according to the Lorentz transformation if you write it in s prime frame then this is your Lorentz transformation matrix gamma minus beta gamma 0 0 then minus beta gamma gamma 0 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1 this is that Lorentz transformation matrix and here you write the components in S frame. So, C t here, x here, y here, z here. So, this is a 4 vector and all these 4 components 
in S frame and in S prime frame are connected through this. This is the Lorentz transformation matrix L. And anything, any four components, set of four components which transform according to this equation as you go from S to S prime is a vector, is a four vector. Here we have uh, six components E x, E y, E z, B x, B y, B z. So, we cannot write uh, this kind of equation, this is a 4 by 4 uh, matrix. So, you cannot create just a vector out of those six components, but then there is another quantity or another class of quantity which we called uh, second rank tensors. And these have 16 components. If my vector has 4 components, then these this uh, second rank tensor will have 4 square that is 16 components. And this quantity itself will be represented by a 4 by 4 matrix. So, let me say A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 1 4 like that A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3, a 2 4, then A 3 1, A 3 2, A 3 3, A 3 4, A 4 1, A 4 2, A 4 3, A 4 4 like that. So, if you have a quantity which can be expressed in terms of uh, such 16 components in a given frame and if it so happens that in S prime you have these components and in and in S you have these components corresponding components A 1 1, A 1 2 etcetera, A 4 4 like that and this is L here remember this is L. If it so happens that this whole thing can be written as this L here and this L here rather L transpose here transpose means row becomes column first row becomes first column second row becomes second column and so on that is called transpose. But this is a symmetric matrix. So, even if you do the transpose it is same as L. So, you write this matrix here you write this matrix here and in between you write this 4 by 4 matrix of this quantity in S frame. So, these components are in S frame and these components are in S prime frame. So, any such quantity for which you have 16 components in a given frame and the components in S frame and the components in S prime frame are related by this relation 4 by 4 matrix Lorentz transformation matrix here, Lorentz transformation matrix here and in between this quantity these components such a quantity is known as second rank tensor. And it so happens that this uh, E x E y E z B x B y B z happen to be a second rank tensor components in some fashion. So, let me write what is that? We call it electro magnetic field tensor and how do I write that? That is let me write it here. The 16 components are created out of the 6 quantities E x E y E y E z and B x B y B z in the following fashion. All the diagonal elements of this is are 0. So, 0 here, then 0 here, then 0 here and 0 here. And then you write E x by C here. This component is E x divided by C. This component is E y divided by C. This component is E z divided by C. So, the first row is complete. In the second row, you have B z here, B z, z component of magnetic field 
and you have minus b y here. In the third row, you have b x here. So, I have written half of this 4 by 4 matrix including this diagonal. So, these are your diagonal elements and then uh, the first row has is 0 x component of electric field by C, y component of electric field by C, z component of electric by C. In the second row, I will just write here and the second this uh, second row and second column this is 0 here, b z here then minus b y here. I will write the components here, but then in the third row third element is 0 then b x and in the fourth I have written 0. To write the remaining components you just reflect these things in the diagonal and change the sign. So, it is my it is so it is e x by c here you reflect you get minus e x by c here. You have e y by c here you get minus e y by c here. You have e z by c here so you write minus e z by c here. Similarly come here. So, what is the reflection? The reflection is b z here so minus b z here. So, this row is complete, this row is complete, this row is complete, this row is complete and two elements are to be written here. You, when you reflect in the diagonal this b x will come here becomes minus b x and then uh, when you uh, reflect on this what you get is b y, this is minus b y. So, the reflection is b y, so b y. Okay. So, this is in S prime, so you write prime, prime, prime. Prime, 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 prime. So the six comp from the six components, e x, e y, e z, b x, b y, b z, we have created this four by four matrix. And I am using the components seen in S prime frame. That is why all these primes are there. In S prime, what are the components? Same components without prime. So let me write that here. Let me write that here. Once again, it is 0 here, then it is 0 here, then it is 0 here, and 0 here. Here you have Ex by C, then Ey by C, and then Ez by C here. Then you have a Bz here, and this component is minus By, and then you have Bx here. So, that is this half, and then reflect. So, minus E x by C, minus E y by C and minus E z by C and reflect. So, this component here is this is B z. So, it is minus B z here. This is B x. So, it is minus B x here. It is minus B y. So, it is plus B y here. So, these are the components in S frame. Now, it so happens that it so happens that if you put this Lorentz transformation matrix here and if you put this Lorentz transformation matrix here the transpose is same as the original matrix and then make a matrix multiplication this 4 by 4 into this 4 by 4 you get a 4 by 4 multiply that by this 4 by 4 you will get this and therefore this electromagnetic field one entity electromagnetic field is a second rank tensor transforms according to the laws of the second rank tensor. The Lorentz transformation is involved is the Lorentz transformation same matrix gamma minus beta gamma 0 0 it is this matrix which you write there which you write here and from that matrix multiplication you get the primed components components in S prime frame. So, that is uh, about this electromagnetic field. You can write all Maxwell's equations in terms of this uh, tensor. It is a, a separate electrodynamics topic, I am not going into that, but uh, yes, the, the components do transform according to the Lorentz transformation, but not like a vector, like a second rank tensor. So, I have covered. Uh, the main topics in special theory of relativity. I would love to give some lectures on geometrical representations of this Lorentz transformation and derived equations. 
and it is all because of all due to a professor einstein's professor mathematics professor hermann minkowski and he was a mathematics professor einstein was a student in uh, his class and um, somehow when published uh, paper einstein published this paper 1905 was special theory of relativity after that this minkowski developed a geometrical representation of all those lorentz transformation and length contraction and time dilation and relativity of simultaneity this that and many more things uh, and that paper was published in some 1900 or 8 or so it's a beautiful representation it's all geometry what they do they take time and space as one uh, entity if uh, you for space if you just take x axis your particle is on x axis always most of the time we have done that right most of the time uh, we have done that so if your space is confined to only x axis then this minkowski's diagrams which we call generally minkowski's diagrams in that you plot uh, two axes right here x and right here ct then any event some event has occurred at certain location at certain time so what is the location location is some x what is the time some time t so you can plot a point here so an event which is occurring in uh, space at a certain time is correspondingly represented by a point so that's the whole game and just on this he has constructed a beautiful geometrical representation which uh, can be taken as alternative formulation of uh, special theory of relativity so i would give some two or three lectures on that and that will be the last part of the course